So I've gotten most of the detail work done on the chassis now. I'm going to go ahead and start painting it. I'm going to work on the wheels first, and I got my Anita's white, and I'm basically going to paint the wheels white. Um, I've already put earth brown on them to give them the earth tone base, but how they did it in the movie, they must have put white paint on the wheels or something because they have a white tone to them that looks like ice. So I'm going to try to model that here basically by doing a wash. So I'm going to take the paint and then dilute it down in a mixing bowl like this. And I'm just going to kind of randomly spread it around the wheels here. And I'll turn the wheels all the way around as I go here. But this is just re uh, representing the ice and snow inside the wheel faces themselves. So I'll do this on each wheel until they're completely coated and they're all uniform. It's best you do this with the wash just because uh, it spreads a little better than putting a heavier coat on, especially after I've already put another coat of paint under it. So do this kind of a thing with a wash. So another quick shot of the uh, GP40. Um, this is the color I'm going to try to create here on the fuel tank and the trucks. You guys can see it's how they did it. It's, it's a bit different than all the other engines where they just basically painted the truck frames white. This has uh, like a brown undercoat and then they put the white highlights and everything to look like ice and snow and it's the same on the fuel tank. Uh, so I'm going to basically try to make this color. So looking at the fuel tank again I'm, uh, I guess I'll just use brown. I, I can't really think of another way of doing this but it's a really light brown color so I definitely don't want to overdo it but I think I can make it work. So what I'm going to do, I have my fine tip brush I'm going to take brown straight from the uh, bottle here and I'm basically going to uh, paint roughly paint the fuel tank here to get this color remember I'm going to paint all this white again in a second so I just want to have this uh, base color put in before I put the white on I'm going to seal all this up too uh, that way it stays in place a little better before I put the white on because if I put the white over this on this glossy fuel tank it'll peel off so I'm just going to take my time and do this on both sides real quick and then we'll come back and do the white highlight. Basically I'm going to take my white now that the fuel tank is coated. I'm using a crappy brush for this by the way too so I can kind of blotch it on. But I'm going to start tucking some of the white paint into the sills just to have the white background. Remember I'm going to put snow effects and all that in here later so this paint is a background for it so it's important we get all these areas coated um, that way when the snow goes on you won't have any bare areas it'll look un unrealistic here so I get the top of the sill and then I start working the paint on the truck frame and just roughly start blotching it in get the same cable Just be careful around detail parts. Make sure you don't bust them off if you're doing anything like this. Just work around them as carefully as you can. Make sure everything's coated here. Now I'm going to fill tank. I'm going to spread the white out. Again, I'm just looking at my photos here, just kind of copying what I see. The snow on the fuel tank is pretty rough. It's actually quite interesting how they did the painted effects on the engine. It just looks like they basically took a paintbrush and painted it on real roughly, so that's basically how I'm trying to do it here. Um, but again, the top of the fuel tank is going to be the most important for covering it in snow, so I really want to make sure this is pretty well coated in white. And again, work it on the sill here a little bit. I'll hit up this other truck in a second, but we're working on the fuel tank right now. Take a little bit more paint. I'm picking up uh, quite a bit of paint at a time here. I'm working it on. I'm going to start 
tucking it in the fuel tank really working it into all these areas I'll put another coat on here after this first little bit's dried but this is just the first coat to get out of shot here so I can get more paint But again, you guys can see how rough this looks, but it'll all make sense in a second. Now here's where the important part of the fuel tank comes into play here. Again, we're just trying to copy the prototype photos and just do the uh, streaks on the side. Real roughly, though. I don't want my paint to get too dry here. I, rest, I don't want to take and start peeling off the undercoat. I just want to get it blotched on. You guys can see it's now the right color. Um, I used that acrylic brown and basically made a wash with this first. And then I went back and added the white wash and everything. I kind of did the same thing with the trucks, um, though I really just basically painted the trucks white. And then I kept a, uh, overlaying some wash into there. I'm going to go back and add some powders to these bearings in a second. But right now we're going to go ahead and add the uh, fuel stains to the tr uh, tank here around the gauge. And I'm just going to use my black acrylic. You can also use like an oil stain. I've done that before. Um, but I want this to be a little bit more like an older kind of dried up stain on this engine. So I'm going to just model that with the paint. Just kind of roughly streak it here. Once I get those lines on, then I can go back and kind of just pan them out a little bit. Sort of like this. So you still get that defined line, but then you kind of have that lighter streaks kind of fan out a little bit, like this. You guys can kind of see that effect. It's really simple to do, but it looks pretty convincing for fuel stains from what I've I found. I've done this technique quite a few times now. But again, it's a really simple way of kind of enhancing those little details. I'll kind of take it up to the gauge or the uh, filler now. Just pick up a little bit more paint first and just kind of take it from under there. And streak it down. Put a little bit on the cap there and the details to kind of give them a little bit more depth. And now I can uh, do the other side and then we can lay some powders. So again, nothing crazy with these powders. You're just applying it in certain little areas, like the bearing. I'm just kind of working it into place here. Just in certain little spots to represent some grease. Again, you can kind of see this detail in the movie. Some of these parts sort of popped a little bit with different colors. That's what I'm kind of trying to go for here. Just put in a different shape. Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, I'm sorry about the uh, delays between the last clip here. Um, I was actually kind of sick uh, in the last couple of clips. That's why my uh, I, my voice sounded kind of weird. Um, I still got to kind of talk quiet, quietly here though. Um, I got some roommates uh, in the room over from me here from my workshop, so I'm just trying to kind of keep going here, but I'll just have to be a little bit quiet. But anyway, from that last clip, this is what we got done on the chassis. You got your uh, details applied and painted now like I said um, I was trying to go for this uh, earthy grimy kind of a color that the fuel tank was painted you can see kind of the color difference between the trucks which are basically straight white this color so I kind of went and basically layered on a little bit of brown my earth brown and then I layered on some white and then I basically just did this step over and over again with washes to create this color. Uh, it's a little bit more noticeable on the opposite side here. Just gotta be careful, I don't want to break any details off, but there you can kind of see that color a little better, that grimy color. So it looks basically <laughs> dead on to the prototype, honestly. It looks pretty good. So once I did that, I sealed it all up with Dollcoat, the trucks and everything, 
and then I went back and did the final bits of uh, the white, straight white dry brush. And then I kind of infused a bit of uh, powder work into it, so you get the uh, fuel tank streaks, a little bit of dark streaks here. Uh, darkening on the uh, trucks again, you guys can see the kind of powder buildup. And then I did some uh, light grimy washes on the trucks as well, to kind of darken them and put a little bit more shadow detail and everything in there. You guys can see how nicely detailed it is at this point, it's starting to look really good. Really good. Now this is going to look really, really nice once it's on the uh, lead engine here. So, as we look at the cab here, you guys can see everything's pretty much done in the cab. It's ready for snow effects. Uh, the cab in the movie was painted black for some reason, and so was the damage on the front, but we'll get to that in a minute. I don't know if they were just trying to make it look like the cab got grimed over in the uh, collision or something. Anyway, uh, what was interesting on this engine, too, is that you could still see the numbers bleeding through. So when I painted the cab, I masked those off and then painted those by hand. And then I also put more of a textured paint coat on this as well, as well with some acrylic. Uh, but you can see the details are installed, like the rotary beacon with the little cable. I just did the cable with some brass wire. But that's the details west part. And again, you guys can see that damage in there. It's really cool. Uh, I'll put some weathering in the windows, too. I'm going to try to do some of that tar splatter and everything inside to make it look kind of beat up like the uh, movie locomotives cab in the movie, anyway. Um, again, the headlights painted over, which is interesting. It's also weird how they did that in the movie, but again, there's the, basically the cab. There's the interior. Do a little bit more work, but it's basically done. So we'll come back to that. We can set that aside along with the chassis. Now, under the shell. Since the last clip, I've gone ahead and primed this in a basic gray primer. I use automotive primer to do this, and I was basically going for a quick spray on coat. It's nothing crazy. I just gave this a basic coat, one quick coat, to kind of cover everything up and see where I'm at. Uh, I double checked all the stuff on the hatch. You can see everything's pretty well filled in nicely. I got all the details on. And so we're pretty much ready to move on here. Um, on the front pilots, I'm still waiting to put the pilot plates and all that so that'll look a lot better once it's all done. We'll fill in that gap. I just got to put the shell back up, but I'm keeping it separate for painting here at the moment and then we'll seal everything up. But it's time to look at the next step here. And that's something I was kind of trying to debate on here, because I wasn't sure how to do it. I really had to think about it. So, it's been a couple days. I've been kind of sitting on this thing and not getting anything done with it, just working on some other things. Um, but I was trying to figure out how to do the damage. And I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about that in a little. Uh, in so I was just trying to figure out how to model some of this damage. And basically what I can figure is it's representing the uh, front end of the caboose with all the damage and everything. When I originally did this on my uh, rendition of the GP40, um, I basically made a large pile of debris with a similar base and then I glued it onto the model. Well, I want to do it a bit differently. I want to do it a little bit more prototypical. So I'm going to try to cut all these exact shapes out of styrene, uh, various uh, sizes of styrene. But this is a good photo here. You guys can kind of see the basic idea of the damage. It's not too crazy and complicated. We can basically uh, assemble that. There's some bits of wire and stuff we can do with some cable and stuff. Uh, there's a couple photos we can look at here. Here's the one from the movie. This is a really good shot of all this. Stands out pretty well with all the snow effects on it. And then again this uh, pretty good side shot here with the damage. So the first thing we need to do is basically make this base sheet with these panels sticking out like this. And again there's enough photos that you can kind of get the idea. So I'm basically going to cut a sheet out and measure it to fit on the GP40, uh, the front of the GP40 here. I'm not going to install the cab for it, I just need to basically fit it over the pilot and then over the nose, uh, the damage. So I'm going to work on that next here and I'll try to guy, uh, basically show you guys how I do. So the base sheet of the engine is essentially one sheet uh, all cut up and I'm going to basically have to take a piece of oh, 15 inch styrene. So essentially the base sheet of the uh, damage is one piece and it's just um, I'm gonna basically have to cut a piece of 015 inch styrene uh, and then make all the notches and everything and cut it out to form around the base of the nose and then I'll basically pile debris on top of it so I'm gonna start by taking this piece of styrene and cutting out the little sections uh, to make it the correct shape and then I'll start being able to form it. I'll make some little slits across here to make it a little bit easier to bend too. Styrene is pretty easy to mess around with a l um, but I still gotta kind of manipulate this a little better uh, so I'm gonna start working on that in here and I'll come back